Uh, I, I want us to try something, a little, a little experiment, if you will, and I am willing to bet that 99% of you will not be able to do this. So try this with, with kids and adults and everybody. Just from where you're sitting, can you make a, a, a clockwise spin with your right foot? Okay, just lift your foot. If you don't know what clockwise is, just like it's to the right. I don't know about our public school system these days. If... Okay, you're making a turn to the right, and then with your right hand, uh, draw a six in the air. It's weird, right? Okay, try, try, try to do it. I'm pretty sure most of you are not getting this done. Uh, couldn't keep it going. Maybe somebody who has studied physiology will be able to explain this to me after. Uh, why can't I do these two same things at the same time? Um, and I want to tell you tonight, there's something else that you cannot do. It's not 99% of us, it's, it's all of us cannot do this. And it's actually why we're celebrating Christmas tonight. Christmas happened because there was something we absolutely could not do, but it needed to get done. And so God stepped in and he did it. It's something simple. And by that, I mean it's straightforward. A child could understand it, but it ain't easy. It's simple, but it ain't easy. In fact, in all of history, there was only one person who could do it. And, it. and it begins on a night like tonight with the birth of this baby named Jesus. And just so we're clear, this baby was God himself in human form come to planet earth. And he's the second person of, of the Trinity, God the Son, what the Greeks referred to as, uh, as the divine logos, the word the one who, who governs all things. And here's how the biography of Jesus, written by John, describes this incredible uh, event. And it goes like this, chapter one in, in John. In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God. And the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him. And nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his very own people and even they rejected him, but... To all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. That may not be the most Christmassy passage that you remember, but it might be the most direct, the most thought-provoking, because it not only tells us the what of Christmas, it tells us the why of Christmas. So, why Christmas? Uh, like I say, it's because of something we cannot do. And here's what we cannot do. We cannot rescue ourselves. And we need rescuing. Uh, we need the grace that only God can bring. And, and God actually created us to be in this close, intimate, personal relationship with him. But beginning with Adam and Eve and repeated in every generation since, we, we turned our back on him, uh, turned our back on that relationship. We've chased after sin. We, we've chose to be our own gods. We've chose to go our own way. At best, we've ignored him. At worst, we've, we've made him our enemy. The Bible teaches that the, the wages or the consequences of that rebellion is, is death. There's a physical death, of course. Then there's a spiritual death. Both are real. And God didn't want that um, to be the final word, though. So he, so he came in the person of Jesus to pay the price for our sin.
This is, uh, this is a little heavy maybe for Christmas Eve, but just imagine for a moment that you are brought to trial for vehicular homicide. You were driving on the road way past the speed limit, texting, and you hit somebody. And you're brought to trial and the evidence is presented. And from the bench, the judge states, I find you guilty and sentence you to death. But then the judge does something so strange. With compassion in his eyes, he gets up from behind the bench, he walks down to where you stand, and he embraces you. And he says, but I love you. The penalty has got to be carried out because I'm an honest and good judge and what you did was wrong and it must be paid for. That's the law. But I love you and I don't want to see your life end this way. So I will go in your place. And he walks out the courtroom and, and straight to the death penalty. That's what Jesus did for you. That's what he offers to everyone. I mean, this is... This is heavier stuff than the Hallmark Channel, you know? This is different than a softly lit movie about a baby in a manger with a little halo. No crying he makes, and it, you know, makes us feel all warm and sentimental and cuddly until next year. But you need to know there's something deeper going on at Christmas. Christmas was the launch of a search and rescue mission by God to call the world back to himself. And it came at a great cost. From the beginning, this was someone who who knew he was born to die, uh, taking on the penalty that we deserve. And then offering the gift of forgiveness, that gift of being saved, a gift for any and all who would just receive it. Why would he do that? Why, why didn't he turn his back on us after we turned his back, after we turned our back on him? And well, um, talk about a simple Christmas uh, on this simple Christmas Eve. The answer is because he really loves you. He really does, no matter how you've lived, what you've done, what baggage you've brought in here tonight, how messed up you think your life is. He loves you. Christmas would have happened if if the only person who needed rescuing was you. That's how head over heels God loves you. That's what we're celebrating tonight. That's the wonder, the beauty, the power of Christmas. Now, how you respond to this simple story, um, that's up to you. A, a lot of us here have decided that this love of God fleshed out in the person of Jesus is, well, it's, it's at least worth a very careful examination. We've, we've pushed past whatever negative experience uh, that religion and hypocrisy and, and bad church baggage that we might have had to explore Jesus, the real Jesus. And we found out that the Christian faith isn't about a program, it's about a person. It's not about a religion, it's about a relationship. And we found that not only does Jesus stand up under any amount of historic scrutiny, but that he actually meets the deepest needs of our life. And and I'd invite you to Explore that for yourself and and come to your own conclusions. Uh, Even if your journey starts with a a healthy amount of skepticism, uh, doubt, cynicism, that's okay. I can't can't speak for every church, but I can speak for this one. Uh, This is a safe place to come and hear, come and see, come and experience, come and kick some tires. It's a safe place to bring your questions safe place to bring your mess. Uh, you, know, you know that part of your life you all don't post on Instagram, that part? The life that isn't perfect. It's a place to bring a marriage hanging by a thread. It's a, it's a place to bring a kid that you don't know how to help, a, a place to bring your fears and your insecurities, your addictions, your bankruptcy, your, your mental health. 
Whatever you bring to the table, I assure you, you won't be the first to have brought it. Maybe you're like the person in this drama who's just spinning plates of all kinds, trying to keep the complexity and the chaos of your life under some control, and it, and it feels like it might be on the verge of it all crashing down. There are no perfect people allowed in this place, not least of all, which pastors, thank goodness. And even though Christians will fail you, Jesus will never fail you. Please understand, I'm not inviting you to come to church. I'm inviting you to come to Jesus. It just so happens, though, that when we're walking with Jesus, we get to walk with his community of brothers and sisters to encourage and coach and support. But if you believe that you've got life figured out, that that you don't need saving from anything, then we can't really offer you anything. (laughs) Christmas can't really offer you anything. Jesus didn't really come to earth born in poverty uh, to serve and preach and die and then live again for folks who don't need saving. He came for sin-stained, messed up, question-filled, struggling with life people who are holding out for hope, for those who would just say yes to his invitation of a transformed life. What an incredible response it would be at Christmas of all times to start a faith journey Uh, investigating who Jesus is and what he can mean for your life. Years ago, uh, there was this ad in in the New York Times, and here's what it said. The meaning of Christmas is that love will triumph and that we will be able to put together a world of unity and peace. In other words, we have um, what it takes to change the world. We have enough light in us to dispel the darkness of the world. We can overcome poverty and injustice and violence and hate and evil if we just work together and create a world of unity and peace. Can can we? You mean the same humanity that gave us the Holocaust and wars and greed and the mortgage crisis and internet bullying and our hope is in us? <laughs> in socialism? In capitalism? Uh, humanism? Even religion? Uh, a series of rules and structures made by men? That's, that's what our hope is in? I mean, is there enough collective light in all of humanity to overcome the overwhelming darkness? I know that some of you have felt even this year, hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus, Prophets predicted in detail his arrival and and what he would bring. And here's what Isaiah says in in Isaiah 9-2. He says, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. And sure enough, we read at the beginning that his, Jesus' life, brought light to everyone. That light shines in the darkness and that darkness can never extinguish it. And later in his life, Jesus would say in John 8, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. But what was the light meant to change in our lives? You know, for people like us who walk, let's be honest, in a land of deep darkness. Well, let me put it this way as I close. Uh, What if Jesus never came on some Christmas 2,000 years ago? What if the light of the world never showed up? It means tomorrow is just another day, December 25th. It means there's no stockings hung by the chimney. There's no bells ringing in churches. There's no churches, uh, no wreaths, no holly. If, If you know our history, you'll know it means there's no hospitals or orphanages or libraries or books, but on a more personal level, imagine that Jesus hadn't come as you think of some of the loss in your life. This week, uh, we toasted, commemorated the anniversary of the passing of my wife's mother, beautiful life that was taken by this awful thing called cancer. 
And some of you are experiencing your first Christmas without someone, without Shirley Ratcliffe, without Sid Henstra, just to name a few. And imagine in this alternate reality, for some reason, I'm still asked to bring some, some words of comfort, but there just aren't any to bring. Uh, my Bible in this alternate reality ends in Malachi in the Old Testament. There is no Gospels, there's no Jesus, there's no hope, there's no manger, there's no resurrection, no future, no heaven. We're still waiting for this promised light to come. Without Jesus, there just isn't enough light to push back the darkness of death. Ah, but Jesus did come. He did come. And the light shines in the darkness. And and the darkness can never extinguish it. Son of God loves pure light. We have this hymn that says, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. That's what Jesus brings. We don't have to fear death. We don't have to face the present alone. The light has come and the light is in us. And and while there isn't hope for the world based on humanity, Jesus' light is in us. For those who believe, you actually can make a difference. And, And all of a sudden, a bunch of messed up, broken humans, but who have the light of Jesus in them, we start bringing light to a dark place. The light of Jesus in us pushes back the the darkness. That is the Christmas gift, the best Christmas gift. Jesus gives himself to us.